From the TMBC Network, welcome to Bad Audiobooks, a parody brought to you by our highly intelligent and full-headed, haired supporters on Patreon. I'm Nick Masmanian, along with my co-host, Ken Heidelman. Thank you so much for listening to our show about good books read badly. So what is coming off of the shelf today? So today we are going to be reading out of the Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales, uh, and uh, turn to page two hundred and thirty-six. Oh, thank you for that. Today we'll be reading the story of Rumpelstiltskin, a Barnes and Noble bo- edition. Yes, a Barnes <laughs> we, are tra- we are both traitors. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we're hey. turcoats. No, we are not. Our failed state of a corporation. Our, <laughs> our country is dead, sir. We are surviving <laughs> in the wastelands of this nation's bookstore world. Anyway, we don't want to get into the politics of bookstore them, but we will get into this book. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, the whole point of this show is that we're here to make you have a have good time and listen to some books, and uh, frankly, I, we get to make some funny voices and hang out. So, I hope you all enjoy it. So, this is Rumpelstiltskin. Ah, there we go. Once there was a miller who was poor, but who had a beautiful daughter. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king, and in order to make himself appear important, he said to him, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold! The king said to the miller, That is an art which pleases me well. If your daughter is is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow to my place, and I will try to what she, and I will try what she can do. Sounds like a prostitution thing. But anyway, when a gir- when the girl was brought to him, he took her into a room, my God, which was quite full of Uh-oh. straw. I mean, I mean, everyone's got their kink. This is getting weird. Gave her a spinning wheel and a reel and said, Now set to work, and if by tomorrow morning early you have not spun this straw into gold during the night, you must die! Those are steep. That's steep. some steep consequence it's a, that's a, it's that's escalation thereupon he himself locked up the room and left her al- and left her in it alone so there sat the poor miller's daughter and for the life of her could not tell what to do and for the life of her could not tell what to do okay she had no idea how to sh- how straw could be spun into gold and she grew more and more miserable until at last she began to weep pop my peas but all at once the door opened and in came a little man and said good evening <laughs> mistress miller why are you crying so <laughs> alas <laughs> alas answered the girl i have to spin straw into gold and i do not know how to do it what will you give me Well, what are you giving me? What well, said <laughs> said the man mannequin M- man mannequin mannequin sure mannequin. If I do it for you, my necklace said the girl. The little man took a, took the necklace, seated himself in front of the That'll wheel, do. and <laughs> that flavor text, I love it. And whirl, 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 three turns, and the reel was in full. Then. He put upon, put another, uh, uh, then he put on, damn it, my dyslexia is coming in. Then he put another on, and whirl. Two dyslexia, this is going to go great. <laughs> I know. Hey, you know, I'm the narrator. I also have a reading disability. This is going to go amazing. <laughs> Confront your fears, and whirl, 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 three times around, and the second was full too. And so it went on until the morning, when all the straw was spun, and all the reels were full of gold. Gold. By daybreak, the king was already there, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished and delighted, but his heart became only more greedy. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room full of straw. His kink is just so crazy. How do you have rooms full of straw? <laughs> straw. <laughs> I need straw gold. I need straw gold. <laughs> <laughs> Which was much larger, and commanded her to spin that also in one night if she valued her life. The girl knew not how to help herself and was crying when the door opened again and the little man appeared and said, 
So it's the same bit. What will you give me if I spin in that straw to go for you? I only have one line, apparently. <laughs> The book's named after you. You're the title of the story, but you only appear a handful of times. You're just that important. The ring on my finger, answered the girl. The little man Thank took you. <laughs> I'm running a pod shop. I'm so, I need he looked like a pimp in the picture. <laughs> like He looked like a medieval renaissance pimp. <laughs> Give him my money! Anyway, so. <laughs> the ring on my finger. Okay. The little man took the ring and began to turn the wheel, and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. The king rejoiced beyond measure at the sight. He, but he still had not, an, and but he still had not gold enough. Fucking, ugh. and he had the miller's daughter taken into a still larger room full of straw, and said. You must spin this, too, in the course of this night. But if you succeed, you shall be my wife. Isn't yeah, wait death a minute. better? Huh? Isn't death better? I know, right? But hang on, there's a quote here. I don't understand how this works. There's like back-to-back -back quotations. Oh, he thought he. So it's, it's inner monologue. Oh, okay. Even if she be a miller's daughter, thought he. I can't get back into my narrower voice that quickly. I could not find a richer wife in the whole world. When the girl was alone, I know, right? When the girl was alone, the mannequin came again for the third time and said, "You know what the <laughs> the score is? Say the line! <laughs> I, I'm not a monkey! I don't dance for peanuts! Dance, monkey, dance!" What will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time also? I have nothing left that I could give, answered the girl. Then promise me, if you should become queen, your first child. This is fucked up. <laughs> this girl's in the worst situation ever. <laughs> Marry the king because you can make this shit happen. But then when he realizes you can't, you're going to die. Or give me your firstborn. I'm into human trafficking. <laughs> it's the long game, baby. <laughs> make a factory of my own. <laughs> I could probably buy them very easily, oh, but I, I'm going for this particular scenario. <laughs> okay. Rumpelstiltskin's looking for VC investment into his new line of labor. Who knows? Oh, I'm sorry. Who knows whether that will... Corporations ever... are outsourcing! <laughs> We've got to stick with the game! <laughs> Who knows whether that will ever happen, thought the miller's daughter, and not knowing how else to help herself in this strait, she promised the mannequin what he wanted, and for that he once more span the straw into gold. And when the king came in the morning and found all as he had wished, he took her in marriage... She could still say, I, I don't really want to do that at the altar, but whatever. And the pretty Miller's daughter this is became a, very a queen. Story. But the thing is, I mean, she is becoming a Miller's daughter into a queen. I mean, I mean, that's like I a, guess in the time. That's a power move. Yeah. This you know, horrible. this whole story is. A hang on. Hang on. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, after a year, after a year, she had a beautiful child and never gave a thought to the mannequin. But suddenly he came into her room. And said, I've been here the whole time <laughs> watching. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, sorry. I mean, now give me what you promised. <laughs> the queen was, in ho was horror struck. <laughs> Suddenly walking. Sorry, I hit my microphone stand. The queen was horror struck and offered the mannequin all the riches of the kingdom if he would leave her child, leave her the child. But the mannequin said, no! Something that is living! I deal in flesh! It's dearer to me than all the treasures in the world! <laughs> Read the line! <laughs> line. <laughs> Can you? No? Oh, yeah, it's you your did, turn, yeah, my friend. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I am. I'm the one that is wronged. Then the queen began Don't to. Don't cross me! <laughs> Damn it, Rumpelstiltskin. Then the queen began to weep and cry. So that the mannequin pitied her. I will give you three days' time, said he. If by that time you find out my name, then shall you keep your child. Oh my god, the next picture is freaking horrifying. <laughs> Here's my little shanty down by the river. Beep, 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 beep. 
I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. <laughs> the name guessing, the build up. <laughs> this is my moment. The stakes. Tonight is the night. Anyway, so the queen thought the whole night of all the names she had ever heard, and she sent a messenger over the country to inquire far and wide for any na- any other names that there might be. When the mannequin came the next day, she began with Casper. Mel, Mel, how do you even, how would you say that? I don't ever say words out loud, so <laughs> I just read them in my head. Mel? Melchior? Melchior. Melchior. Balthazar. And said all the names she knew, one after another, but every one the little man said. That's not my name, baby! On the second day, she had inquiries made in the neighborhood as to the names of the people there. She repeated to the mannequin the most uncommon and curious. Perhaps your name is Short Ribs or Sheepshanks or Lace Leg? But he uh, always we're, answered. We're taking lunch orders. And, uh, <laughs> that's more of a dining option. She also runs. She's a queen and runs a great lunch counter. But he always answered. That's not my name. On the third day, the messenger came back again and said, I have not, uh, hang on, I have not been able to find a single new name, but as I came to a high mountain at the end of the forest where the fox and the hare bid each other good night, there I saw a little house, and before the house, a fire was burning, and around the fire, quite a ridiculous little man was jumping, he hopped upon one oh one leg and shouted. I kind of want the messenger to read his song since he's the one relaying it to uh. her. <laughs> or it's, it could be me. Okay, no, 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 no. I I will do it. I, I let me see if I could do. Let me see if I could do it in the voice and do rumble still okay. at the same time. That's that's some deep <clears throat> shit. Let's see if we can do it. Today is the day I bake. Tomorrow I brew. The next I'll have the young queen's child. Ha, glad am I that no one knew that Rumpelstiltskin I am styled. Bravo. Oh, thanks. You may think how glad the queen was when she heard the name. And as soon afterwards, the little man came in and asked, Now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? Say it! (laughs) At first she said, is your name Conrad? No! Nope. Is your name Harry? <laughs> no way, baby! Perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. The devil has told you that! The devil has told you that! Cried the little man, and in anger he plunged his right foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went ah! out. And then, in rage, he pulled at his left leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. <laughs> that's really gross. That's Dude, a gross that's, ending. And that's the end of the story. That's that's the He's original himself in half. That's the OG Rumpelstiltskin. Like I've never knew that that's how that ended. I mean, I knew she guessed the name, but he always like disappeared or sang some stupid song like from a 70s animation. I mean the the whole <clears throat> Here's a room full of straw, spin it. Now here's Dude. a larger room full of straw, spin it. Now here's a larger room full of straw, spin it. Oh, my and, God. And, and the dad. Boring. And well, the thing is, this all kicked off because the dad's like, my daughter's so great, she can spin straw into gold. And because he wanted he to sound fancy. The pub. This is all about, well, this is, it seems like it's just all about, like, social climbing and stuff. Like, he wanted to sound fancy and, like, gain favor. And then the king's like, hey, that's cool. I like money. Your daughter can make money. Have her make money for me. And if she doesn't, she'll die because she doesn't matter. Neither do you. Yeah, she, I'm the king. She has no. Um, ooh, fuck! What's the term for writing characters? Oh, uh, she doesn't have uh, agency. Yeah, there you go. No, no agency here. No, 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 no none at all. She's she's reacting. not a person. Yeah, like I mean, she she kind of gained maybe a tiny bit toward the end because she's trying to figure out how to get out of her shit deal that she had to make with Rumpelstiltskin. But like, there. Yes. I mean, you know, she's trying anything she can at that point, so... I, it just doesn't seem like they're not addressing the fact that the king's like, I only need you to, to spin straw to gold three times, and then I will never, ever ask again. It will never come up. Hey, can you marry me? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, that's all problems are solved. There's enough gold forever. Said no one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We don't need this oil. After we're done with this oil, we don't need it anymore. We just need to mine it for like six months and we're good to go. Hey, that country doesn't look like it has freedom. We should go give it all the freedom. Uh-oh, it has oil, too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, that was Rumpelstiltskin by the Brothers Grimm. And I can't wait to read more from this book. So if you like this show, please subscribe. I'm going to do the plug. Oh, Sorry. We're, we're plugging. Why not? I mean, we're here. Might as well tell people. So yeah, subscribe to us or tell us that we suck on Instagram. I don't know if we have Instagram. We have no social media yet. But when we do, look us look us up on Instagram or whatever. Where, where can the good people find you, Nick yeah. Basmanian? Oh, yeah. Well, you can find me on Instagram at Real Maz, Real Human Maz, Real Human Maz. And uh, what about you, Ken Heidelman? Where can people find you? You might guess it. It's at Ken Heidelman. Ooh. Instagram's the best one for me. Yeah. I draw things and I have a comic. You can read that too. You know what's in the, silly voices. You know what's the funniest thing? Um, you are actually like six foot three and you read a very. I'm six foot six, my friend. Sorry. Oh, man. I shorted you by three inches. I'm sorry. My God. <laughs> what have you done to me? You broke my leg in it too. And I'm not ripping apart. Get shorter. <laughs> I need you to be a race car driver, damn it! It might be more like six five and a half, but it gets weird. In those I just love that you're a very tall person and you read like the shortest character in this entire <laughs> story. <laughs> He's, I'm a little bad. <laughs> I dance. I want gold, <laughs> straw babies. It's just like, man, women get screwed, and the uh, disabled or the malformed or people who are disabled in any way get like shortchanged super hard in this stuff. So. Let's, oh, I'm excited to read the horrors that are to come. Oh, man. It's going to be so good. I can't let good. go of this voice. <laughs> Apparently, you're doing it the entire time. I'm committed. I only had three lines. Break out of it. If you, what are you going to give me if, you, if I spin the straw into gold? Did you Daniel Day-Lewis this? Did you, like, lose yourself inside the character so hard that you have a mental break? You should see me at the catering table. His girlfriend's going to be so sad. So, uh, I've got straw gold here for the, for, uh, is this the... Is this is a vegan salad. So uh, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, just tell everybody about it and you know, let us know if you liked it. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next time.